Welcome to the second training session for the Simplifying software. By now, you should have set up all of your properties, tenants, leases, and bank accounts for online payments. If you still need to verify your bank account, simply go to the Tenants tab, Tenant Center, and enter in the two small deposits in this green box. Then click on Verify Account. Now the bank account is active for online payments and can now receive deposits. So for today's training, we'll go over the Owners tab, Vendors tab, Banks tab, Task tab, and Automation. So in the last video, we walked you through in setting up a bank account. If you plan on reconciling your bank accounts, then you need to map owners and vendors to the banks. Currently, I don't have any vendors, so I'll quickly add one. I'll go to the Vendors tab, Vendor Center. Add vendor. I'll say that this is ABC Gardening Company. You can enter in their email, phone number, write any notes, and upload any documents. I'll click Save. And bank mapping will be done by going under Banks, Bank Center. We can see that this bank account is active for online payments. We'll go to Take Actions, Edit Bank Details. You want to click on this last blue link where it says Make the default for the following transaction types of owners and vendors. And you want to follow the three steps. The first step is to tell the software what type of transactions this bank account is for. The first option is to say it's for all of these type of transactions. The second option, you can specify the specific transaction. So let's say I have a separate bank account for security deposits. I'll check mark everything except security deposit. Step two is mapping the owners and vendors. So I'll check mark Bob and ABC Gardening. And the third step is to check mark this box if the future owners and vendors should automatically be mapped to this bank account. Next, save. So right now we can see the bank balance is zero. Earlier I entered in that we received rent from tenant Tom Jones. So let's create a deposit. We'll go under banks, create deposit. And we can see the check here for $600. To make the deposit, I'll simply check mark Tom Jones and save. And again, this is all for bank reconciliation. And we'll actually come back later for that. Next is the Owners tab. So we'll go to the Owners, Owner Center. And the Owners tab is used if you're managing for other owners. If you are the owner of the properties, then you can skip this section and move forward to the next section of the video. On the left-hand side, we have the owner ball, and on the right, we have the balance. There are two ways to pay your owners. The first way is to pay them online through the system, and the second way is to print a physical check. We support pre-printed checks and blank check stock, and one check per page and three checks per page. If you plan on paying your owners online, then you can invite the owner for online payments by clicking on this green button. Enter in their email. And right below, we can see the email that will be sent. And you can also CC yourself on the email and then set up and send invite. Now we can see that the owner has been invited for online payments. If you always plan on paying an owner online, then you can set the default payment method to online payments so the system will automatically queue up the message to send to the bank. To do this, you'll go to Take Actions on the right, Edit Owner Details, Default Payment Method, online payments. 
The second option is to print a physical check. So if you plan on always printing a physical check for the owner, then you can select the print checks option. So the system can automatically queue up a check for you to print. And the third option is record transaction only. So if you plan on just wanting to keep track of the owner payments, you can select that option as well. And I'll select print check and save. To pay the owner and send an owner statement, go to the Worksheet tab, Property Worksheet. And at the very bottom is an owner's row. Click on the white arrow next to the owner's name. And we can see the total income, expenses, and you want to follow the three steps. The first step is to record an owner draw. We can see the payment date and the payment. If you click on the plus sign, you can write notes and see all the details. I'll click on record owner draw. Now the payment is recorded and step two is to print the physical check or send the message to the bank for online payments. So I'll click on print check. We can see the check here for Bob. I'll enter in a starting check number. You can enter in a check memo. I'll click on print check. And the system will generate a PDF to print the check. And the last step is to generate an owner statement. We can see the total income and expenses. You can customize the message. You can select the time period. We can see the owner Bob, his email, and you can print, email, or publish this to the portal. You can also preview it. I'll click print, and we can see that it's been printed on that date. Next is the Vendors tab. The Vendors tab is to keep track of a vendor's balance. On the Vendor Center, we can see the vendor listed on the left and the balance on the right. Currently, it's zero. You can add a vendor by clicking on Add Vendor. I have a vendor named ABC Gardening, and you can also pay your vendors online or print a physical check for them as well. The steps are the same as the owners to set both of those up. To invite the vendor for online payments, simply click on the green online payments button to send the email invitation. To set the default payment method, simply go to Take Actions, Edit Vendor Details, Default Payment Method, and then select Print Checks Online Payments or Record Transaction Only if you only want to keep track of the transactions. I'll select Print Checks, and you can also map the vendor to a specific expense. So click on Map Vendor to Expense Rows, and I'll map this vendor to the Gardener row, so I'll check mark that, then Save. So after I map this vendor to the expense, we can see the balance on the right is now $50. To pay the vendor and to see how this balance was calculated, go to Take Actions, Vendor Balance History. So under February, we can see $50 of expenses, zero vendor payments, which is why it's showing up in red right here because the system is telling me that I still need to pay the vendor. To pay the vendor, click on Record Vendor Payment at the bottom left. You can select the date, enter in the amount,
after you record a vendor payment and the payment is to go through the online payment system, then you need to send the message to the bank by going under Banks, Make Online Payments. If you plan to print a check, then you'll go to the Print Checks page to print that physical check. So here is the check for ABC Gardening. We can enter in a check memo. I'll simply click on Print Checks and the system will generate a PDF to print the check. Since we've recorded more payments, let's go back to Bank Reconciliation. So we'll go to Banks, Bank Reconciliation History, Monthly Bank Reconciliation. To reconcile, simply follow the three steps with your bank statement ready. The first step is to enter in the statement end date and the ending balance. The second step is to enter in any service charges and interest earned. And the last step is to check mark the transactions that cleared in the account using your bank statement. We can see the payments and checks on the left. We have payments to ABC Gardening and the owner, Bob. On the right hand side, we can see deposits and other credits. We can see that this payment was from tenant Tom Jones. So again, simply check mark the items that cleared in the account and then save. We can see it listed here and you can always edit or delete. Next is the task tab. The task tab is where you can receive maintenance requests from tenants and where you can create work orders. If you check mark this box, you'll also get an email notification every time a tenant submits a maintenance request. To create a work order, click on add task. I'll say that this is a door repair. You can upload files or pictures, write a description, select a property, select a date and a time. You can also assign it to a vendor and the vendor will receive an email notification. And then save. Now we can see it listed here and we also have a calendar view. Simply go to task calendar. We have it here. If I click on it, we can see all of the details. Last is automation. So click on automate at the top. And we have our automation center. The first thing that you can automate are property management fees. You'd simply enter in the flat amount or the percentage, and you can add as many formulas as you'd like. So I added 10% and 8% and then click on property list for each formula and apply the formula to the specific property and then save. Right below, you can automate late fees. Simply select a day and the system will add late fees to late tenants. Next, we have rent receipts. Choose a day and those will automatically email to the tenants on that day. Same with late rent notices. Choose a specific day and those will automatically email to the tenants. Last are owner reports. Same idea, choose a specific day and those will email to owners on that day. That's everything for the second training session. We recommend adding and mapping vendors to expenses, then mapping owners and vendors to bank accounts for bank reconciliation, setting up default payment methods, and last, setting up automation. Once you've completed all of these steps, then we recommend moving on to the third training session video.